Hi, welcome to another IGCSE physics video. In this video, we're looking at section 2.3 part one, which is about gas laws. In this video, we're gonna look at multiple representations of Boyle's law, which include the general definition of Boyle's law. We will also do some math problems that involve this law, as well as how this law can be represented on a coordinate plane. So we will see graphically how pressure is involved with the volume of a gas in Boyle's law at constant temperature. So the general definition of Boyle's law is that for an ideal gas, the pressure of that gas is inversely proportional to the volume of the gas, making sure that this is in the condition of constant temperature. Now in the general definition, we said that the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to volume. So in a mathematical definition, if we were to describe Boyle's law, we could say that the pressure is proportional to one over volume or pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Now there's another way of writing this mathematical formula that I've written, where pressure is inversely proportional to volume. You can rewrite this as an equation where pressure equals to K over volume. Now in this case, the K replaces the proportionality symbol, and the K in this case is the proportionality constant. Now another way you can write this equation, P equals to K over V is as PV equals to K, or pressure times volume equals to the proportionality constant of K. Now, so far we have only looked at how we would describe Boyle's law in a verbal definition, and also the mathematical definition where PV equals to the proportionality constant. Now, we're gonna look at Boyle's law from an experimental approach. A common example of demonstrating Boyle's law is in a piston system. Let's say that you had, in this case, two vessels which had two pistons. And let's say that you filled the first vessel with a certain volume of gas. It could be an arbitrary value, but it doesn't matter. So let's just call the volume of this first vessel V1, and let's call the pressure P1 for the pressure of the gas. But we haven't really thought about how we can measure the pressure of the gas in the vessel. So a question that I could ask you guys who are watching is that, what measurement device could we use to measure the pressure of the gas in the vessel? Take a moment to think about it. Well, one way you can measure the pressure of the gas is by using a pressure gauge, which you could attach to the system. Now, in terms of the motion of the particles, let's describe how the pressure of the gas in this case will vary with the volume based on the position of the piston in the vessel. Now, a statement that we can make about the system is that the volume of the particles represented by V1 is relatively high as compared to the after state of this experiment. Now in terms of the pressure of the gas, we know that if the volume is high, then the particles will have a greater amount of space to collide with the surfaces of the container. And we know that if the surface of the container is higher, then the pressure will be lower because we know that pressure is equal to force over area. And we know that if the area is higher, then it doesn't matter what the force is, the area is going to be greater. So if we divide some amount of force divided by a higher area than say in the second container, then the pressure is going to be low. And of course, to make things fair in this experiment, we have to make sure that the temperature of the system is gonna be constant. Now let's look at what happens after you compress the gas by using the piston. Let's say that you bring the piston down by a value of half. So now your volume, which is represented by V2, is equal to 0.5 of V1. So in this case, your volume was V1, but now your volume is only half as much as V1, so it's going to be 0.5 V1. And we'll represent 0.5 V1 as V2. So this brings up the question for the after scenario. If we decrease the volume of the gas by a factor of two, what would happen to P2 or the pressure of the gas after the compression occurs? Well, we could assume that in this case, the pressure of the gas P2 will be twice as much as the pressure of the gas before the experiment occurred. In other words, it's gonna be 2P1. And one reason for that is, we know that the formula for pressure is equal to force over area. We know that we're not changing the temperature of the gas that's inside the containers. So the force that's being exerted on the sides of the wall is going to be about the same as in the first scenario, because we're not changing the kinetic energy of the gas by increasing the temperature. However, in this case, the force that's exerted on a certain area on this container is going to be higher because in this case, the force will remain the same, but our area will decrease. And if we decrease the area, we know that the overall pressure will be high. 
So when we decrease the volume from V1 to V2 by halving it to 0.5 V1, our pressure would actually double to 2 P1 or P2. And in terms of verbal explanation, we could say that when the gas is compressed from V1 to 0.5 V1 or V2, the pressure of the gas will double to 2 P1 or P2. And that's also when making sure that the temperature of the gas in both scenarios is constant. Now, when we were doing the mathematical explanation for Boyle's law, we said that the pressure times the volume of the gas will equal to the proportionality constant of K. So we can apply this to the scenario that we have here. We knew that the volume of the gas was V1. So I represented the volume of the gas with V1 here. And we knew that the pressure of the gas was P1. So I represented the pressure of the gas with P1. And we know that if we multiply P1 with V1, then we should get the proportionality constant. So we can make an equation for what happens to the gas after the compression occurs. So after the compression occurs, we can say that the pressure is 0.5 V1, which is also V2. So we can write this as V2 over here. And we said that the pressure of the gas after the compression is 2 P1, which is also P2 in our other terms. So we can multiply this by P2. And so the multiplication of 0.5 V1 times 2 P1 will give us K because 2 times 0.5 will be equal to 1. And we're left with V1 times P1, which should equal to K, as we stated in this previous equation. Now we said that 0.5 V1 is equal to V2 and 2 P1 is equal to P2. So we could rewrite this as V2 times P2 equals to K. Now we said that K equals to V2 times P2 and K equals to P1 times V1. So we could say that pressure 1 times volume 1 equals to pressure 2 times volume 2. And this is essentially Boyle's law in terms of mathematical equations. Now we understand that pressure 1 times volume 1 is equal to pressure 2 times the volume 2. And this is when the compression occurs or even when an expansion occurs. From the beginning of this video, we knew that we can rewrite this law as pressure being inversely proportional to the volume of the gas or pressure is directly proportional to the reciprocal of the volume. Now we know that the pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So we can write this equation as pressure equals to K over V. Now this would be a rational function. And if we draw the graph, it would look something like this. From this graph, we know that the X axis is represented as volume and the Y axis is represented as the pressure of the gas. So we know that if we increase the volume of the gas, then the pressure of the gas will decrease because if we pick a point over here, let's say uh, we also picked a point over here. And let's say that we call this point over here V1 comma P1. So before we do the compression, the volume would be V1 and the pressure of the gas would be the certain amount, which is P1. Now we know that if we compress this gas by using the piston, the volume of the gas is going to decrease. And let's call this point V2 comma P2. So we decrease the volume and now the volume of the gas is around here. Now we know that if you decrease the volume of the gas through the compression of the piston, the pressure of the gas is certainly going to increase given that the temperature of the gas is going to be constant. And we know this because of Boyle's law because pressure is inversely proportional to volume or pressure is directly proportional to the reciprocal of volume. So in this case, the pressure is going to be much higher as compared to the first case where the pressure was around here. Another thing to remember in this case is that the product of the volume and the pressure for both of the points that I've plotted on this graph will equal to K. So if I multiply the X and Y coordinates for both of these points, I will certainly get the K value to be equal. So this value will equal to this value. And this is because the temperature of the gas will be constant. However, the K is not the temperature of the gas. So don't be confused with that. Now this compression that we did for Boyle's law is actually known as an isothermal process. Iso in this case means the same and thermal relates to the temperature of the gas. So we could say that this is the same temperature process because in both cases, the temperature of the gas will be the same. Also, there's a term for this type of graph where pressure is inversely proportional to volume and it's called an isotherm. And this is it for section 2.3 part one. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and you now understand the concepts of Boyle's law in terms of the mathematical definition, the verbal definition, the experiment that we did with Boyle's law involving the piston, and also how the pressure of a gas varies with the volume of the gas as we compress it or expand it 
while making sure that the temperature of the gas is the same. Subscribe for more videos in the future and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.